in this article, basically, the most concerned age group about being able to pay for living expenses if they lose their primary source of income is the Gen Zers, uh, Generation Z. Well, I call it the TikTok Nintendo generation. Uh, 85% of Gen Z's respondents in a survey said they were worried about paying for one month's living expenses without income compared to 79% of millennials, 69% of Gen Xers, my generation, and 53% of baby boomers. So the most concerned one is the uh, Gen Z, the younger uh, generation. Financial anxiety is increasing amongst all workers, with nearly a third of workers reporting that it's affecting their sleep, and 73% is changing how they envision their retirement. Almost two in five Americans don't have enough saving an emergency fund to last a month, and 29% have less than $500 saved. What are your thoughts about this? Uh, you're, you're, you're close to this generation five years uh, gen z's are uh, from age 11 to age 26 if i'm not mistaken 11, 11 to 26 uh less than 500 dollars, man you know how much anxiety that, that would that just gives me thinking about like my entire life livelihood is depending on a job and i only have 500 dollars to be able to survive in this economy um well what i i uh i think this was either you or i forgot who sat down and spoke to me one time but I just, depending, uh, based off of a conversation I had with this person, it was, pro it was possibly you, I think like two, three years ago. Um, there was actually four things that I took away from this conversation. I think I went to one of your uh, BUMs on a Tuesday night, and then you guys usually go off for cigars. And then mm -hmm. among, amongst you guys, there were a lot of people yeah, asking after questions. After the meeting. Yeah. yeah, after the meetings. So I, I, I had four takeaways from, from that meeting, especially for, for the people between these ages. And the, the, the four takeaways. Uh, Gen Z is anybody, anybody burn, burn, born between 1997 <laughs> To 2013. So 11 to 26 years old. Yeah. Yeah, 11 to 26 years old. Is number one, start saving as early as possible. And that's something that I made the mistake of not doing it whatsoever. I didn't, I didn't start, start saving until maybe about six, seven years ago. And again, it's just my thing was trying to just survive habit, and, and, and get by. Yeah. Get by. Uh, number two, being able to think long term, you know, when it comes down to retirement, whether it's an IUL, whether it's a retirement plans, whatever the case may be that you may, that may fit your, your uh, financial tier. Uh, being able to stick to a budget and avoid lifestyle creep. One of the things that I noticed, uh, Matt, when I started making money or uh, comfortable money mm -hmm. was that the, the more I, was, I started making, I started adjusting my lifestyle to it. I started going out more. I started buying, you know, nice so things. So your income increases, your expenses increase? Automatically. I didn't stay below my means. Life, I, lifestyle creep. Lifestyle Probably, creep. Yeah. And number four, man, is stay informed. Educa educate yourself in knowledge. Read books on financial literacy. Connect with, you know, YouTube channels, podcasts, audiobooks on people who've already been there, done that, who can actually walk you through the steps on how to be financially successful and how to be smart with it. Money, uh, money smart guy right next to me. This is a really good guy to follow on YouTube. Man. <laughs> figure squad. So you know, when I was when I was twenty you know, when I was in my twenties, yeah. I was twenty two when I had my son Ruben, yeah. he's, who is twenty eight years old now. My uh, I was twenty eight years old when I had my twins. So in my twenties, I had three kids, single dad, and I was raising. Them. I had residential custody in there in my school, my, my house, my school system. And if I didn't, fo I, I didn't focus on saving money. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm in the money business. I'm in financial business. My first intention was not to save money. My first intention was to increase my income, increase my skill set, increase my ability to operate in a very wealthy industry, which I picked at the insurance industry, so therefore I can create more cash flow, because what's the reality? No matter what I can do, I can never go negotiate grocery prices. Sure, I can cut coupons, and sure. and, and, and I can budget my you-know-what off. I can, I can save money on gas, I can this, this, that. So there's a minimalistic type of mentality to getting through tough times or having a, a tight budget. But my saving grace, was increasing cash flow because the most, I don't know, the moralizing thing when saving for a rainy day mm -hmm. is then, okay, the rainy day comes. And then the emergency fund goes. Yeah. The savings goes. Yeah. Emergency fund goes, the savings goes, guess what is charged? Credit cards in personal loans. But if I focused on increasing my income, bam, I had confidence. Okay, I drained a rainy day. I can always replenish the rainy day or worse, if I lose... These, these, uh, this report it says if these Gen Zs lose their job, well, I didn't focus on a job. I focused on self-employment, owning a business. He or she that controls your income controls the decisions you make in your life, thus controlling your life. And so when I'm looking at the, uh, the, the typical financial conversation, budget this, budget that, it's so, by the way, budgeting is annoying, but it has to be done, but that's not the 
end all be all of this particular situation. So if you're a Gen Z out there, my recommendation is go out there, make things happen with a side hustle. Don't try keeping up with your, your Joneses, with the Joneses and your friends. And um, if there's times where your friends want to go out and eat, uh, be able to say, listen, I'm, I'm, let's negotiate. If we're going to go out and eat with friends, let's make sure we pay for our own food. Yeah. And, and not, you know, we're, we're, you know the Filipino uh, mentality is well, whoever invites pays. No. It's, uh, you know, unless you're eating at the house, you, know, you can cook for everybody. It's cheaper and right. more economical to do that. But if you're out with friends and you feel the peer pressure to spend money, I'd stay away from those type of friends too as well. Especially if you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend. If you have a partner that likes to go out, that likes nice things, the luxurious things. And here's the thing, man. A lot of people, they, especially the, the younger generation, the only way that they ha- tend to have fun, they, they don't enjoy small talk. They don't enjoy doing the basic the basic things as a couple getting to know each other, the things you should be doing. Yeah. In order for them to have a good time and really embrace the relationship, they feel like they need to go out to nice, fancy restaurants. They, what, what, what's one of the first things a lot of women, especially nowadays, they do, that they do when the moment you sit down at a nice restaurant and you get the food, of, uh, the plate of food on, on the table and you're about to dig into the food, what's the first thing they do? Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Then he puts this on Instagram. He puts this on Instagram. Sure. They grab their phone and they start recording the entire thing. And if, the, and if it's a girl that you're entertaining, if it's a girl that you're trying, you know, you're trying to show off for, you're trying to you know, you know, uh, get the brownie points for, the craziest thing is, man, those women don't even put you on their social media. Uh, they record the place. But not you. But not you. And they might the one rec- that's paying for the food. And they might record your hand, but they will leave mystery to it. Uh, that's one of the biggest things. If you're a guy out there be- between maybe the ages of 18 and 26 years old, gen- a Gen Zer, and you're trying to impress women who aren't giving you the same energy back, and they're just literally leaking out your bank account just so that way yeah. you can gain that, you know, what, yeah. whatever you're trying to gain from that specific relationship. You, you need to be able to understand that in order to be able to build what you're trying to build, whatever it is you're trying to do for your future, you need to be able to think long-term. And the right woman will walk into your life. I have no idea which camera I'm looking at. But, <laughs> it, but in order to be able to have a successful future in whatever you're trying to do, the right woman needs to be able to come into your life and align herself with what exactly you're trying to do. And the only way to be, to be able to have that, you need to let that woman come into your life naturally and not force it. And that's something that I'm personally learning these last two years. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.